Okay, so here's a pretty brief video of how to generate G-code using MakerCam.com and I am just following the instructions that you can find at our um, GitHub wiki um, in the ground control wiki. So I can link below in the description, I'll link to this actual website um, so you can see the written instructions that I'll be following for this video. But if you prefer to learn with a video, that's what this is for. So, first step in generating G-code using MakerCam.com, of course, just to open MakerCam.com. Just want to do that. And it'll take just a second to load. So, now we got MakerCam open, and the first thing you want to do is you are opening an SVG file. So you just click File up here and then Open SVG file. And for this, I'm going to be using one of the parts for the machine. Um, so the example we're using is Angle Brace 4. So I'm going to select that SVG and it will open. You can go up to the corner here and zoom out just a little bit. And you'll see that this is the piece, Angle Brace 4. So um, First thing you want to do generally is just look at it and just make sure that it looks correct based on what you are imagining you want to cut. Um, keeping in mind that these squares are each an inch. Um, so that gives you a, a pretty good idea of, of how big the piece is. Um, one thing that's really important when using MakerCam to generate G-code is that this origin in MakerCam is going to be the home when you're in ground control. So depending on how you orient your piece around the origin, that will help you to know when you're opening um, your G-code in ground control where exactly the piece will be in relation to where you're setting as home. So say I want to have it be this corner is home. Instead of this corner, you just move it or say this one. And just click and drag your piece to move it. Um, to that origin spot, which is going to be home and ground control. Um, you can also rotate the piece by having it selected and then going to edit um, and hit rotate selected and then you can choose whatever degrees you want to rotate the piece. Um, if you're trying to, say you're trying to fit it in one section of your, of your plywood and you just want to have it flipped a certain way so that it will fit in there perfectly, you can rotate it like that. So now that I've got this selected and set where I want with in relation to the origin. I'm going to go ahead and set up the cut by going to cam and then clicking profile operation. Um, and all these settings are just the different settings that you'll use um, depending on what material cut you're cutting, what kind of bit you're using. Um, so this is all totally variable but I'll just go ahead and kind of explain what each one is more or less. So the tool diameter um, is the bit the size of the bit that your router is using. So generally, I think most people are using eighth inch or quarter inch bits, so 0.25 would be a quarter inch bit. Um, the target depth is then, that's the, the thickness of whatever material you're, you're cutting. Um, so say you want to cut through three quarter inch all the way, we usually say add 0.05 um, to that so that you're making sure that you're going to clear all the way through the material. So setting it to 0.8 for 3 quarter inch material would work. Um, the inside versus outside is just if you're cutting around the outside of this um, line or around the inside of the line, so we'll keep it on the outside. The safety height is um, how high the bit raises if it's moving from two different uh, points. If, say, you are using the z-axis and you want to raise the bit to a certain height when you move from cut to cut. Um, this isn't the best example because we're just cutting one single piece in this example so we wouldn't actually be raising or lowering the bit to move to a different cut. But generally you can set it lower than 0.5, you could do 0.25 um, is usually plenty of space to raise up out of the material. Um, keep the stock surface at zero. And the step down then is how much you're moving down with each pass of the cut. So again this is up to you. You can set it however you like. You're welcome to play around with it but usually we could say you know a tenth of an inch is a good amount to go down with each pass on a cut you're making. 
Then the feed rate is how quickly um, the router is going to be moving along the material. So we're aiming for around 25 inches a minute. That's getting us a really clean cut right now. Um, and the plunge rate is how quickly you're plunging into the material. And um, for this, it's not quite so important just because we're going in such a small amount with each pass that you don't really need to worry too much about the plunge rate. And then obviously the direction is if you're going counterclockwise or clockwise um, with your cut. So click OK. And this will have created these specifications and this will turn blue on the inside. And then to actually get that toolpath, you're going to click cam and then calculate all. And it'll take a second to calculate. But then you can see that all those specifications you just selected are showing up in the form of this green line. So this green line is the actual line of the cut that's going to be made. So once you've got that opened up, you're going to click CAM one more time and then export G-code. And it's important to be sure that this, if you're doing more than one piece, um, all in one G-code, that you have all these different profiles selected. Um, obviously this is just one cut so it is selected but when it's blue that's how you know that it's actually going to be exported in the g-code so go down and click export selected tool pass and then I'm gonna name it angle brace 4 um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and save it on my desktop but you can save it obviously wherever wherever you'd like and then click save and that's gonna have that NC file now saved on my desktop ready to be opened in ground control and cut using Maslow.